This lesson deals with the solution of a first order circuit with a sinusoidal response. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7 starting on page 28. For resistor capacitor and resistor inductor circuits with a DC input and a switch, we found that the form of the solution was some a plus b times e to the minus t minus t0 over tau for really any voltage or current in our circuit uh, after the switch has changed state. This term here, b times e to the minus t minus t0 over tau, is something that's called the natural response, the zero input response, or the solution to the homogeneous equation. In other words, this is what the circuit wants to do independent of what we apply to it. The term a here is sometimes referred to as the force response or the steady state response. In other words, the DC input produces a DC output eventually. Then lastly, this whole equation together is sometimes referred to as the transient response. Suppose that we have an RC circuit with a switch and a sinusoidal input. And then at time t equals zero, this switch closes or opens, and we're left with a Norton equivalent circuit. And that the Norton current source is some cosine omega t with an amplitude, we'll call it I sub a. Just like our previous circuits, let's assume there's only one capacitor in our circuit. And that this capacitor could have an initial condition, we'll call that V of zero. All right, so we can solve for V versus time. All right, the current that enters the node equals the current that leaves the node. So I've got this I sub a cosine omega t entering. And then the current that's leaving is the voltage across the resistance divided by the resistance. And then the current in the capacitance is equal to C dV dt. Let's just rearrange terms here now. Let's divide through by C. So I've got a C here and a C over here. Put this term over here, put this term over here, put this term over here. So again, we've got a first order differential equation with constant coefficients. Our knowns here are R thevenin, C, I sub a, and the initial condition. For this particular circuit, we'll have to take a little different approach to finding the solution. We were able to solve for it through just integration in our last case. Here we have to do something quite different. When you build a circuit, it does the same thing day in and day out. So I know there is a solution to the differential equation, I just don't know what it is. What we're going to have to do with this case and the ones that come after is we're going to take a guess. Use what we learned from our previous case that the natural response was of the form a times e to the minus t over tau, where a was a constant, and tau was r thevenin times c. For this force response, we could pick a function whose derivative and function itself needs to equal the i sub a over c times the cosine of omega t. When you differentiate a cosine function, you get a sine function. So they're related by an angle. So you can maybe put a constant here, theta, and then the amplitude usually changes. So our constants here would be b and theta. Our guess of the solution of the differential equation then would be our a e to the minus t over tau is a b cosine omega t plus theta. We really have four unknowns here. We have a, tau, b, and theta. Now we actually know the value of tau. It's r thevenin times c. So I'm going to need three equations to solve for the remaining three unknowns. Now our differential equation has a derivative in it. So let's differentiate this expression. The derivative of a e to the minus t over tau is a uh, times 1 over tau, e to the minus t over tau. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, omega t plus theta, and we take the derivative of what's inside here, which would just be, with respect to t, would just be omega. We have a constant b. Okay, so we can put this together now and substitute the terms into our differential equation on the previous page. Here's the derivative of v of t, we just found this, and then we have, the next term is uh, v of t divided by r thevenin and c, which is tau. So here's our term here and our other term in our v of t divided by tau, which is r thevenin times c. And then that's going to equal i sub a over c times the cosine of omega t. We also have an initial condition. We know the value of the capacitor voltage at t equals 0 minus, and therefore it equals 0 plus, just like we did in our previous work. If you go back to this equation and plug in t equals 0, you get a, and you get b times the cosine of theta. So here's one equation in my three unknowns. I need two more equations. Let's go back up to this equation here. Now, this term here is identical to this term, so they drop out. This first term, the second term, and then you bring this on the other side of the equation with a minus sign. I have one equation here, and I'm going to show shortly that I can actually get two equations out of this, which will allow me to solve for them my three unknowns. I've got a sine of omega t plus theta and a cosine of omega t plus theta. I want to break that up into a series of terms. So let's go back to basic trig and use some of our trig identities for sine and cosine. Now the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. 
and the cosine of alpha plus beta is the cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. You don't have to memorize these. Just simply, uh, we're going to grab these out of a calculus book or a trig book. Let's go back up to these terms here now. So I've got minus b times omega. I'm going to use this first one here. So I'm going to get sine and cosine. And then I'm going to get cosine and sine of the first term and the second term, first term and the second term. Same thing for this one here. I'm going to take this and make that into this, which is cosine, cosine, sine, sine of the first term, second term, first term, second term. I have a whole bunch of things that have a sine or a cosine of omega t in it, so I'm going to factor those out. Let's look at the previous page, but the things that had sine omega t multiplying it was minus b omega cosine of theta and minus b over tau sine of theta. All the things on the previous page that multiplied a cosine of omega t were minus b times omega sine of theta plus b over tau cosine and then minus i sub a over c. Now this is equal to zero. The sine and cosine are not identically zero, in other words they, they vary between uh, plus one and minus one. And for this equation to equal zero, this term has to equal zero and this term has to equal zero. So I could just set that term here equal to zero and then set this term equal to zero. Now I've got my two additional equations to solve for my three unknowns. I'll let you look at the algebra here. It turns out that theta is equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of minus omega tau. B turns out to be I sub A over C tau, one over cosine of theta, omega squared tau squared plus one and then we'll eventually solve for a and then b. So I'm skipping over the algebra here is that I want to talk about the results put together and we'll see an interesting conclusion. It's possible to solve for the unknowns that we had. And so we can see the form of our solution again is some a times e to the minus t over tau plus b times the cosine of omega t plus theta. If you wait long enough, transient response dies out and you approach this answer. The transient response of these two terms together, but unlike our previous cases for our RL and RC circuits, we don't get a simple result. We can calculate this, but it's not going to be very useful. We could, instead of solving for this, just use p-spice and watch what happens until we reach steady state. What will be interested in AC circuits is just this term right here. This would be for our audio applications and even for our RF applications. What this is saying is that in steady state, the amplitude and the angle are changing from what we started with. Now this is a very tedious process of solving this first order differential equation with just really one R, one C, and, and one current source. When the circuits get more complicated, this isn't really a very practical approach to solving problems. And so we're gonna take a look at in, in ECE202 is another method for finding actually this result right here. And we can also find the complete response those two put together. This will be in uh, chapter 8 of ECE202. Actually, in supplemental 8.9, I'm going to redo this problem in just a couple short steps. And this is how you would solve a first-order differential equation with a sinusoidal input. 